Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouched. Last time we got just a few moons that we'd missed in the previous video. Um, I think what we need to do now in order to progress is go open the moon rock, which is over here. So we're going to be going over to the post-game part of Tostarina now. Also, we're dressed as a cowboy now, so... Um, you're welcome. <laughs> we, we need this outfit later on, we don't need it just yet. But... You buy it here, so I bought it here. Anyway, um... There's a whole bunch of extra moons to get once you open the moon rock. If you look at the menu here, there's 89 now instead of 69 to get. So yeah, another 20 moons to be discovered. Uh, let's see, these bunnies have shown... shown... show... show... arrived? <laughs> shown up, is what I was trying to say. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, one of the bunnies has a moon, the other ones just give you coins. I don't remember which is which, and I don't think this game indicates which one actually has the moon. Which is a little bit frustrating, but not a big deal. Uh, you can just go grab a jaxi to make chasing them much faster. Which can be handy. Yeah, that one just had some coins. Uh... It's now gone, so hopefully one of the other bunnies we chase will be the right one. Throw me a cactus that the bunnies does not do anything, so don't bother. For some reason, even when they're slowed down by being hit with your hat, they still turn around at full speed, which is a problem for our run. <laughs> oh my goodness. See, so normally I would just run at normal speed in order to chase these guys, but I can't do that because when I'm on the ground, I crouch and waddle. Uh, so, lots and lots of rolling and jumping it is. Oh my god. There we go. Okay, that one just had one coin. So this last bunny is the one that has the moon. Oh my goodness. And yeah, it's gonna run away. You gotta hit it with your hat. You actually have to hit it. You don't actually have to hit it with Cappy. You can get these bunnies just by touching them, but it's much easier if you hit them with Cappy so that they get slowed down first. Um, and since we can't move very fast, that's the ideal way to do things at the moment. There we go. And there's the moon. Ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah! Okie dokie. Uh, we actually only got one moon so far in this video. I didn't cash in the last three, but that's probably fine. No big deal. Uh, if we look at the map now, over there there's another one. You need the Jaxi to do that, so we'll have to get a Jaxi to do that, obviously. Um, we might do that shortly. Oh, maybe we'll do that now. Make our way back to Tost Arena. Oh, right. Um, so, yeah, when you open a moon rock, it makes people from other kingdoms show up, including these bonneteers here. Bonneteers? 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 Uh, so there's some fellow hiding on someone's head. If you're all over here, you can see that this hat has some eyes. That's the one. <laughs> So there's a bunch of hat and seek moons throughout the game, which I think are hilarious. You just have to find these hats that happen to be people and talk to them. It's pretty cute. Uh, there's Luigi from Luigi's Balloon World. Uh, let me see. Okay, there is a sub area just here, so I might have a look at that one. I don't really remember what it was, though. Uh, there it is. Uh, so yeah, this is one of the moon rock pipe sub-areas, the ones that come out of the moon rock for some reason. This one is... Oh, this one, right. Okay, so what you're supposed to do here is capture the Moai, so you can see where the platforms are. Then you can make your way across to that moon in the distance by keeping an eye on where the invisible platforms are using the Moai's powers, basically. Uh, a fairly simple idea. Um,
Oh damn, Puff must have moved while it was invisible. Um, there's two moons to be had in here, and basically you just waddle around as one of these guys while seeing invisible using their sunglasses, because that's a thing that they can do. They move much faster if they're not seeing invisible for some reason. Like, they just sort of crawl around with the sunglasses on, and they go quite fast with them off. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Anyway, to get one of the moons, you have to go this way, get on this platform, grab the key, the moon breaks out of that little box there. This area is fairly easy, let's be honest. Um, it can be done without capturing a Moai, and basically just jumping your way all the way there. Uh, I don't know how well I can do it in this run, but because capturing a Moai means I can't crouch, I might give it a shot. Okay, uh, this platform will start to move. Uh, basically what you want to do is stay on the platform, but there's invisible things blocking it. So you have to carefully make your way past those. You can in fact just jump on the invisible things and not use this platform at all, but you basically have to memorize where they are to be precise enough to do that, and I don't want to do that. Um, that seems less like fun, like advanced play and more like just busy work to me. Uh, there is a platform underneath where the moon is, even though it's invisible. There you go. Ba -da -ba. Yeah! So yeah, if you'd use the Moai, you would have to like run back and forth to avoid being pushed off, because Moais can't jump. Whereas if you do it as Mario, you can just basically do what I did there. Uh, which I think is probably more fun. It's a lot faster, certainly. Uh, since you have to wait for the platform to reach the very end, you can just jump around a lot. Um, Jam and Toad is up here. We haven't spoken to him yet, but basically the deal with Jam and Toad is Jam and Toad is jamming <laughs> and wants to jam to a certain song and will ask you to play that certain song. So basically, this is just making the music list feature in the game have an actual like purpose in terms of gameplay. Memories of a tough battle. So what you have to do here is just basically choose any boss battle you want and play its music. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Robo Brood music, so let's go with that. There you go. It doesn't matter which boss battle you choose, so... You can just pick anything. The music will keep going after you get the moon, which is kind of funny. Uh, we already did this rocket area, so we won't be doing that again. You can see there's a moon over there in the in the lava. Not lava, that, that other stuff. Purple stuff. Poison. In the poison. Um, you can get a jacksy to get over there, but I'm gonna try to do it without one, see if I can manage it. Yep, sure can. Yeah! Uh, getting back might be a bit harder. <laughs> See how we go. No, that's totally doable. Cool. Ba -da -ba -ba -da 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 -da. Da -da -da. Uh, let's see. There's a couple of Lamodians here saying they can't swim in the poison. You and me both, sister. Uh, there's a moon inside that box up there. The way to get it is to hit it with a bullet bill. I don't really like that one because the only way to get a bullet bill left fast enough is to shake the controller a whole lot. And motion controls suck. <laughs> so, not my favourite moon. Uh, there's a few more moons just over here in the ruins we can grab now. So we shall be getting a few of those. Uh, we already did this one, so we don't need to worry about that anymore. Uh, let me think. I'm pretty sure there aren't any more birds in this kingdom when you open the moon rock. Which is good because birds are annoying. Uh, Alright, yeah, that's right. Okay, so there's one over here on the opposite side of this 2D section, which I'm going to skip. Not because it's impossible to get into, because it turns out it's not impossible to get into. 
just because it's faster. Uh, and there's a moon over there now, just in the sandy bit. You have to be really precise here because if, when you land on the sand, you basically can't jump back off again because it's a slope in this game. Steep slopes are really annoying. Yeah! Once you've got it though, you're all good. Just slide on down. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da. Uh, let's see, there's another one. Somewhere near the tower? Is it inside the tower? I can't remember. Uh, let's have a look. They might have put a note in the tower like they did in um, Fossil Falls that I have to collect to get another moon in there. Uh, that would mean having to go into the tower again. Yeah, see that music note? Okay, we'll see how we go with this. As you may recall from the last video where I did one of these, it's, it's really hard. And this timing still sucks. There we go. It's not too hard, and this one's got a lot more room to move, so I think it won't be too hard to get the notes either. Although, if we hit our head, that might be a problem. Um, I'm just going to give myself a life up heart just to save a little hassle here. Also, yeah, I think that's the only place in the entire game that has, a, like, an 8-bit life up heart, is when you use the Peach Amiibo to get one. Okay, I guess I'll go this way first. Yeah, first try. That's much easier than the one in Fossil Falls when you're crouching. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay. Um, so there's another one just out here at the entrance to the ruins. I, if I recall correctly, this one involves using rocket flowers. Um, and it's quite difficult, under normal circumstances, to do perfectly. Um, I think it won't be too much different while crouching. Yeah, that's the one I thought it is. So there's a moon there, there's also a key up there, which will open this block and get you another moon. So basically what you have to do... Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch off the music and just go back to regular music. There we go. Uh, basically what you have to do is use these rocket flowers to climb up this platform real, real fast. Because it's about to sink into the poison. And you gotta run on the wall and stuff. And if you bonk like that, then you're gonna just slide into the poison and, and you're dead. So this is quite difficult normally, um, and that was pretty much normal, so you can see that it, how it's quite difficult. Um, but yeah, basically what you have to do is run really, really precisely and really, really fast so that you don't die. And I missed the key, but we can keep going without it for the moment. So we got one moon. Uh, there are of course two here, but you have to do it with the you have to get the key to get the other moon, so we'll have to try this one more time. Uh, the ruins have crumbled into the ocean, so we will have to backtrack. We'll have to exit the area and do it again. Not a big deal, just go do it again. Um So yeah, that's that's pretty much unaffected by the fact that we're crouching. There is a slight risk in that if a rocket flower runs out, we won't just keep running. We will immediately crouch and probably roll instead. Uh, yeah, there's still at least one power moon in here somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in that block over there. Oh gosh, I only got two flowers. Um, I'm a little worried about that. It again. Yeah, if you run out of Rocket Flower, you just... You, there's nothing you can do. You just kind of fall in the poison. Oh, so, you absolutely have to get all three Rocket Flowers at the beginning there, which is hard because you have to do it fast, and you have to be in the air in order to throw Cappy, as we all know. There we go. 
Okay, and you really want to refill your flowers here too, because one of them will have run out by the time you get here. Like that is the best way, so you get two more. Oop, you can only have the maximum of three, but filling up two at a time is a good idea, just in case. Okay. This is gonna be a thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go, all three. Jump, jump, throw. Jump. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I got the key that time. <sighs> Just gonna make my way to the exit without dying. Oh god. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Um. Run, 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 run. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because the flowers ran out. Oh, I had to make that last bit happen without running, and it was very scary. Oh, but we did it. We did it, folks. We got the moon. Oh, wow. Ba -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah. Yeah, so that one would be the harder of the two, because you've got to snag the key exactly, and that slows you down a bit, making your way to the other bit. I'm absolutely sure you can look at something with this case binoculars to get a moon in this area. I just, it doesn't seem to be happening though. Hmm. I must just be misremembering. This is cute though. Cappy's a very caring and sweet friend and I love her very much. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay, so. There's a moon up there you can see, just sort of floating in the air. Um, we will be going up there to get it. Uh, first I think we'll... Um, actually, yeah, let's just warp on top of the round tower and do it from there. Basically, you just have to redo this little pla moving platforms area of the of the kingdom again to reach that moon over there. Um, not a biggie. It's not difficult, really. Um, if you want to do weird stunts and stuff, it's much harder, obviously, but that's true of anything. Um, but yeah, you basically just have to make your way over towards it and just do a simple jump to make your way over to where the moon actually is. Uh, just let the platform get nice and close before we start doing wacky stunts. Yeah! See, very easy. Uh, then we just fall back down to this platform. Which takes... I don't think we've been on this platform yet, actually. I think I skipped it before. Um, there's not much here, just a couple of... Like, blocks you can break if you want by hitting those things. And a couple of coins you can get. And then you end up over here. And over here, there does happen to be another moon to be had. Uh, it's pretty easy to get. All you got to do is make your way over. Get on top of the pillars so you can go on the invisible bridges. Uh, I believe it's this one, maybe? Yes. Yeah, there's, there's a rumble on the controller that you couldn't sense, um, but there's a moon there. Um, also, it was visible on the map because all of the moon rock ones get marked, so it's, it's not very hard to find, basically. Uh, what else needs doing? Uh, there's another air, like challenge area over here, but that one involves using a capture. I think it's a gushin. So that one's a bit easier than the other stuff. Uh, that one's the bullet bill one. That one, I go do another trace walking with a bit more precision this time. There's one near the oasis apparently. I don't remember what that is. That one, um, you have to collect a bunch of notes as a jaxi. While riding, while riding a jaxi, not as a jaxi. Free running is open. Uh, there's a few more things we can do. I reckon let's walk over to the oasis and have a look at this one. Um... I think all, most of the hard stuff is done, so we should be able to do this, do the rest of this in a decent amount of time. Uh, there's some fork people here, which is pretty cute. Yes, seafood does come from this oasis that has like three fish in it. <laughs> Definitely, this is the place. Uh, so yeah, there is a moon. Oh yeah, just up there, see? Just on top of that tree, easy peasy. Yeah! Uh, okay, so that that one you want a jaxi. We can get a jaxi in Tostarina Town, so let's do it that way. 
it's not too hard. It's just a straight line of notes you have to get, but because the jacksy is really hard to steer, it becomes a little bit tricky. Uh, it's not, it's not especially difficult though. Just gonna make your way over here. You can block some of these if you want. And there it is. See that note there? Yeah, you just gotta grab that. And then basically run between the cacti, see? It doesn't help if you face the wrong way though. It's basically impossible to do this fast enough without a jacksy. The time is very tight, and you're going uphill for a lot of it, so you can't just roll that way. Ba -da -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay, uh, so that's that done. Uh, we need to do trace walking again. We need to do a couple more moons over there. Uh, one of these you have to take a Goomba. Um, so we'll do that next, I reckon, because the Goombas are here. It's kind of a big walk. Which is a bit silly to do with the Goomba, but, you know, whatever. Oops. There we go. Yeah, basically, you just have to capture a Goomba, and then walk all the way to the edge of the desert, because it turns out Goomba has an identical twin. I guess. I don't know. Like, there are two Goombats in the level. I don't, I don't know why. And one of them was inside a moon rock, so it's like, Goomba has an alien twin? I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, all you gotta do is just walk, 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 all the way to the edge of the desert. Uh, you keep walking. You can't go any faster than this, and, like, Goombas don't have triple jumps or anything, so you can't... Or diving, or cap bounces, or any of that cool stuff. Oh, I haven't actually shown this, have I? Uh, basically, everyone is terrified if you go go near them as an enemy, even though it's obvious that it's Mario because of the moustache and the eyes and the, and the hat. Which is kind of funny. Um, whereas enemies do still know it's Mario and will attack you while you've captured a Goomba. Or any other monster, which is interesting. Because, you know, if it's so obvious, you'd think that the friendly people could notice that it's obvious and be friendly. <laughs> but apparently not. Okay, so, yeah, it's just all the way over here. There's just a Goomba at the edge of the desert that you can fall in love with. Hello, sweet... Sweet Goomb, who is pink and has eyelashes. Wish Goombella from Thousand Year Door was in this game, that would be amazing. Goombat's cute, but Goombella is just fantastic. She's a, she's a wonderful character. Although not quite as good as Vivian from the same game, who is the best character. I love Vivian so much. Okay, uh, so over here, there's a really upset Tostarina in here because of all these posters that Bowsette's put up about the wedding. Uh, I don't know why Bowsette put up these posters in the post-game after you've stopped the wedding, because they weren't here until we opened the rock, so... I don't know if the posters are actually aliens, and that's why they're in the moon rock, or what? Um, basically, you just have to get rid of all of them, and you'll get a moon. It's pretty easy. Uh, like, those ones, you just have to do a couple of wall jumps and stuff, and you can get them without too much trouble. Uh, the ones over here, you want to basically climb on the cactus to get them, uh, like this. Because they're just a little bit too high up for a regular jump. At least some of them are. The ones over there. There we go. And you just get a moon for doing that, because you're a good citizen, I guess. Uh, so, that's that done. Next up, we're gonna... Post clean up, yeah. Next up, we're gonna go do the Koopa free running stuff, which should now have spawned over here. Yeah, I was sure you could do half of that in the in the um, A side, but apparently you can't, which is a bit weird. Uh, yeah. So the race is going from here to Tostarina Town, basically, and it happens at night, which is cool because there's no other way to get back to night once you've completed the story moons and done the one that happens at night. Which is very short, because most of it you do underground. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. I'm gonna probably try using the power lines. I think this is probably the fastest way, because power lines move you so very quickly. You can also use a jacksy, or you can just try to roll on foot. Um, rolling on foot is the slowest way, so don't do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, as you can see, I'm coming first. Thanks to these very, very fast power lines I'm zipping through. There you go. Job done. You have to do that twice, um, because of the Master Cup version that has the Gold Cooper, who came from the Moon Rock, I guess. Gold Cooper are aliens. Um, the Gold Cooper will use the Jaxi, or at least jump on a Jaxi and then just start going really fast. They don't actually take the Jaxi. Um, but the power lines are faster, so I'm going to do the same thing again, as I just did. Uh... Using the Jaxi is a pretty effective way because you have full control over where you go. You don't have to take a big detour off to the side. But the power lines are faster enough that it doesn't really make a difference. That the Jaxi is more controllable. So long as you can move between power lines nice and quick, you are going to be most successful with doing it this way. Because power lines are very quick. You can see I'm coming first. There, that was an even better time than before. I optimized it somehow. And yeah, there's the gold cooper now, so you can see how fast that was compared to their time. And you get another power moon. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay, let's see how we're doing. Uh, there's a moon up there. Um, I reckon we can do that. Basically, you just have to get on the power lines and jump off at a certain time in order to get that moon. It's pretty easy. See? Easy peasy. Uh... I'd like to get back on the power lines. I can't. Uh, I might have been able to do that with a decent long jump, but eh, doesn't matter. Let's head back this way. Uh, the next thing I want to do is go to the top of the inverted pyramid because I believe Princess Peach should be up there. And the easiest way to do that would be. Go back here again. Pop. So yeah, Peach is over there with Tiara. I'm guessing they're being gay because that's what they were doing in the previous few kingdoms. Oops, sorry. Okay, it cancels out the torque animation if you hit them with the cap for a second. So I keep jumping again. This huge stone thing could float. The world is full of wonders. So mysterious. Oh my goodness, a power moon in the sand. How exciting. Peach in the sand kingdom. Beautiful flower fields. Okay, so you want to go to the Wooded Kingdom next? It's interesting, actually. I went to the Lake Kingdom next, like, next in my run, so you'd think you would want to go to the same place. I believe you can go to the Peaches in any order. Like, it doesn't actually matter that you do the first one, then the second one, then the third one. Um, except that you have to do all of them to get the last moon, which you get for visiting her back in... back home again once everything's done, basically. Uh... Alright, so, yeah, there's a challenge room here. This is the one that I believe is a Gushin. So, it shouldn't be changed too much by our restrictions. Yeah, Gushin. So, yeah, there's, there's a Gushin, there's a bunch of icy water. Using the Gushin protects you from the ice. And I believe you absolutely need it, so, yeah, you do. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe I can... Let's see. Mm, no, that, that's too wide to wall jump, so, yeah, you need to use the Gushin. That's a bit sad. Uh, so yeah, you just have to fly your way over here. There'll be another pool of water here so we can replenish our juice. Another one here. There's two moons in here, like in most challenge areas. So we'll be getting both of them as usual. Uh, you just have to fly up here, and then fly across this poison here. And this poison here. And this last bit of poison here. There we go. So that's one moon. And there's another one we can get at the end. So this is the hidden one, supposedly. It's not very well hidden, to be honest, but it's, it's sort of hidden, I guess. Anyway, you just have to backtrack across the poison. It's not hard. It's pretty easy. There you go. Then you can just use these little platforms to gain a bit more height and go this way. 
So yeah, this is not doable without the Gushin. Because Mario can't gain as much height as we're gaining here, or hover as far, far as we're hovering here. I think some of the Gushin challenge rooms can be done without actually using a Gushin. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, but this one isn't one of them. So yeah, that was easy. Um, completely unaffected by our restrictions because the Gushin doesn't crouch. Um, what do we have left? If I look at the number of moons here, okay, we can get one from the bullet bill thing, we can get one from the trace walking, or trace crawling as the case may be. You have to get 90 points instead of 80, and last time I got 86 on my first try, so that might take a few tries. Um, we can probably also look at the hint art now and unlock that. The hint art points to a much later kingdom in the game, so we won't be actually getting it right now, but... Once you've looked at it, it's been activated, and you can get it, so... Very important to do that. Uh, okay, so let's just... Let's just, um, throw our hat at this princess if we can. There we go. So yeah, basically what you have to do is get a bullet bill from here. And you want to stand over there, basically, in order to... Oh. In order to accidentally take a hit. Because the timer, I do believe, actually resets when you... Capture the bullet. Ah, see, you gotta hit that block before time runs out, and you don't have very much time to work with. <laughs> so, I think probably what I wanna do is backflip over the bullet, and then throw my hand at it from the other, other way once it's already a bit closer. Yeah, it's starting to run out, and it explodes. Okay, so, let me see here. Also, if you stand on this pillar, the bullets will just hit that wall and blow themselves up, so that way doesn't work. You've got to be on this pillar. Uh, you can move across to the other pillar once the bullet is past that first wall, but it's, it's fiddly. Oops. Not quite what I had in mind. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, this might be a bit tricky. Uh, it's because the time is so tight, is the problem. Um, what I could probably do is hit the bullet over here. Ow! And then uncapture and recapture, maybe? I think that resets the timer. Okay, um... Okay, let's make our way over to the pillar first. The thing is, there's not a lot of room to move once you're over there. Which means hitting a bullet precisely is a bit tricky. Oh my goodness. It's much easier to throw your hat when you're doing these, because you don't gain as much height from a long jump as you do from a backflip. Oh, so these guys have hats, which makes it harder to capture them, which is annoying. Um, okay. Damn it. <laughs> oh my. Okay, yeah, this one's already technically difficult, like, without the restrictions we're applying, so this might be really hard, actually. Um, we'll see how we go. Uh, hopefully we can do this. I would be disappointed if we could not. Uh, just hit that sand pillar, just a checkpoint. There we go. How did that bullet get up so high? Oops. Yeah, that won't work if I uncapture it by accident. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know how I just did that. <laughs> okay, um... Yeah, the thing is I take two hits, and there's no other way other than hitting them with Cappy to do this. And if you do a jump and then... Oh my goodness. This is such a hassle. Yeah, that's nowhere near. God. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is this is a thing. Uh, I might life up again just to avoid having to reset and warp over. There we go. 
say, you can do that as many times as you like, whenever you like, which I think is a bit overpowered. But I guess that's what you get for spending more money on Nintendo. The ability to cheat in your video games. I suppose assist mode, like, also gives you a similar power, since you can just regenerate health whenever you want in assist mode. But, I don't know, it's supposed to be making things easier, and this is spending more money. You know, it's not, it's not great. Ah! Yeah, my idea was to jump out of the bullet and then jump back in, but it doesn't seem to have quite worked. Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, so close. Ah, oh, so close. So yeah, that, that's probably the biggest challenge facing us right now, because it's so very hard to capture a bullet precisely with our current situation. And that, that is the closest bullet you can get. You have to take it all that distance. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. No, Mario, do not do this. Do a different thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so make our way over the pillar. Like that, there we go. You want to not jump on the bullet though. It's the problem with backflips. <laughs> Yeah, I wasted a bit too much time at the very beginning there, because I didn't go straight in the right direction, and I wasn't doing the shake-accelerate thing. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of bullets in the game where you have to shake to accelerate in order to get there fast enough. This one's the most annoying. Um, there's one more in the um, moon caverns, which have the same problem, but I think this one's more annoying than that. Also, I messed that up really bad. <laughs> Thank goodness you can go up this way, rather than having to go all the way around, honestly. Oh my god. I mean, maybe you can get up this way if you're, you know, good at the game. Like someone other than me. <laughs> okay, there we go. Ugh, no good, no good. You, it's not enough to just get onto that platform, the bullet has to hit the platform. So, you can't like dive out of the bullet to gain more height or anything, which you can normally do when you're riding a bullet bill somewhere. Um, it's pretty easy to get onto the platform, you can actually use glide on to do it. But to get the bullet onto the platform is much, much harder. That's how you do it. Oh, da da da, yeah! And the name is really simple and unassuming of anything. It's not like, you know, bullet blast on the eastern pillar. It's just on the eastern pillar. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the last um, moon rock moon is this one, Cooper Trace Walking. And that gets us to 84. Uh, then we get to 85 when we do uh, Secret Path of Trust Arena, where there's still a few missing which I can't remember the locations of. I might go talk to the, um, talker too and see if he's, see if they've got any, like, extra clues for me. <sighs> and then we'll go do Cooper Trace walking once we've done that. Uh, I know that there's one more that we get by doing 
doing the tourist story. When the tourist gets back home, there's a moon here. There's also a moon in a bunch of other places the tourist needs to get get to, so yeah. Beyond that, I'm I'm not sure. Um Oh the art, right. I haven't looked at the art yet. So that's one more moon. Let me see. So three, four, five, six. Hang on. Seven. Yeah, that that's getting closer. I can go look at the art. Uh it's just around here. And I'm pretty sure it's supposed to show up earlier, but yeah, it's right here. Just go look at that. You can take a picture if you want with your capture button, like that. Um, I think that one... Yeah, okay, so it's just there. Okay, so Sand King... Oh, hang on. Did we... No, we did do it. We did do both the Sand Kingdom Cups. The other one's just down here. Okay, so the last Moon Rock Moon is this one, which we'll be doing in a second. Uh, then there's... One, two... One, there's two more moons that I don't... There's the tourist one. There's something else. And then there's these two, which we can do. Hmm. Okay, so there's one more... There's basically one more moon I can't remember. At this point. Because we can't do Dancing with New Friends. Which means our total... Our best total is 88. Which means there'll be four more once we've done this one. Which means it's the Hint Art one, the Tourist one, the Secret Path to Tost Arena, and something else. Which I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Trace Walking. I covered this already, like, in the previous... A few, a few videos ago I did this already. But it's a bit harder now. Um, basically, our path has to be more perfect. Yeah, the arrows are going to disappear, which makes it a lot harder than it otherwise would be. And we have to waddle like this, because obviously if we try to roll, we're not going to be able to go in a circle like this. Uh, I think it's a little bit sharp, but it might be okay. see. That looks really good. Oh! <gasps> 100 points! <laughs> oh my gosh, what a perfect walk. More walking in the desert. Yeah! Okay, so what do we have left? Dancing with new friends we can't get. It's impossible. Uh, these two we will be getting. Then there's these two, which I can't remember. Let's see if Talker 2 will tell us another one. I think... Talk it to if you haven't gotten that moon yet, you'll still get told about the same one. But that's not always true. Oh, there's the tourist one, right. So, yeah, there's one I can't remember. Um, and then we're done here. Uh, it's not actually in the moon rock either. We have all the moon rock ones, so I guess we're pretty much done with the second half. Okay, so let's see. We're gonna get to 88 out of 89 because we can't do that because we have to we have to stay crouched. We're gonna get that. We're gonna get that. We're gonna get the tourist one later. And there's one more that I can't remember that might need us to do something that I that might it might be something like the tourist one where you have to do something elsewhere and it unlocks an area that I've forgotten about. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we made some good progress today. We got uh, we didn't we already had three of those moons so. Let me see, we actually got uh, 24 moons today. That's that's quite a few moons. <laughs> Let's go cash those in. Um, that'll actually be enough to unlock the next area. We won't be going there for quite a while because we're doing the kingdoms in order here. But that's a pretty good progression. New products out of the shop, yes. And the Odyssey has powered up. So you get that nice little powered up tune again, which is great. We can now access the dark side of the moon. That makes us real explorers now. We won't be going there yet. We won't be going there for quite a while. In fact, we're about to go to the Lake Kingdom because that's the next place we'll be collecting moons, which we'll start in the next video. We won't do that straight away. Um, but for now, 
that's Tostarina. Uh, two moons that we have to do by coming back by, from other kingdoms. One moon that we can do by doing a story across multiple kingdoms, and one I've forgotten about <laughs> entirely. It's, it's completely slipped my mind. Uh, hopefully we'll remember, or I'll remember wh exactly what it is at some point, and one that's impossible. And I think that might be the only impossible moon in the kingdom. I mean, it is the only impossible moon in the kingdom. I, it's not the only impossible moon in the run, because there are two more that work sort of the same way as that one in other kingdoms. So you probably can't get those either. Oh, okay. We didn't do the boss. I thought we did the boss here earlier. I guess we didn't. Okay. Uh, we didn't do a lot of stuff here earlier, actually. Um, but we won't be doing it right now. So, yeah, that is Toast Arena essentially done. Uh, just to reiterate for the 11 t billionth time, there are... There's one moon here which is decidedly impossible, which means there are four moons that we still need to get. Both of these I know how to get and we'll be getting. One of these is the true wrist moon, which we will be getting, and the last one, I have no idea. I think it's possible, but I can't remember what it is. So we're gonna see how we go with that. <laughs> also, wow, only 87 of 100 purple coins? What have we missed? I've forgotten something fairly significant in the, um, in the Sand Kingdom, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> since we're still 13 purple coins short. Gosh. Hmm. I mean, I know there's a couple, like, just dangling over the edge, but there aren't 10 like that. I think there's just, like, a set of three like that, so the other 10 could be anywhere. We're going to see how that goes later. For now, we're in the Lake Kingdom, and we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff here in the next video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>